Welcome to Physician Perspectives. I'm Dr. Jeetan Bento. Allow me to present a favorite topic of mine, the circadian rhythm. Here is an introduction. Let me start by quoting Richard Preston. In biology, nothing is clear. Everything is too complicated. Everything is a mess. And just when you think you understand something, you peel off a layer and find deeper complications beneath. Nature is anything but simple. In this publication titled Circadian and Ultradian Clocks and Rhythms, the authors quote, Rhythms are a ubiquitous property of all living organisms. The term biological rhythm can be used to describe any molecular, physiological or behavioral event or process that is recurring. Please note that the reference to a publication is available at the bottom of the screen. Please feel free to access the publication. They are all available online. The authors have kindly broken down this world of biological rhythmicity into a simple diagram here and they have broken that down into ultradian, circadian and infradian rhythms. These rhythms can last from seconds and can go on for a year or years. We are focusing mainly on the circadian rhythm. The term circadian derives from a Latin phrase Cicadium, which means about a day. We have further dissected that day into 24 hours for our convenience. So we can conveniently call the circadian rhythm a 24 hour rhythm. You have to realize that these 24 hours comprise of light and no light or day and night. The circadian rhythm that follows the daily daylight-dark cycle or the light and no light cycle govern rhythmic changes in the behavior of most species in our planet. There is an entire field of uh, science called chronobiology where researchers study the mechanisms underlying the biological timekeeping systems and the potential consequences of their future. Let me take you through the activities of a typical human circadian rhythm. Let's start at midnight 12 o'clock when we should be fast asleep. We reach the deepest level of our sleep around 2 o'clock. Our temperature drops to its lowest at 4.30 in the morning. We wake up early in the morning around 6.45 or 7 o'clock when there is a rise in blood pressure and a reduction in melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone of uh, darkness. There is an increase in testosterone and other hormones. It reaches a peak around 9 o'clock. This wakes us up and uh, keeps us highly alert. And we go through our daytime activities. The cardiovascular system and the musculoskeletal system cope with our daytime activities. Towards the evening, we prepare ourselves for sleep. Melatonin secretion increases at around 9 o'clock at night and we go to sleep. So here is what would you know a typical human circadian rhythm look like. After the illustration of a typical human circadian rhythm, let's get a few notches deeper into how the circadian rhythm works in biological systems. Here is a beautiful illustration of how to keep the circadian rhythm running. In order to keep the circadian rhythm running, we have to have uh, circadian timing systems. And these timing systems are run by clocks that are present in various organs in our body. The master clock is in the brain at the suprachiasmatic nuclei, the SCN. And that governs pretty much all the other clocks in the body. And these clocks in various organs have to work in tandem. They cannot work against each other. Because if it does, or if they do, then disease uh, manifests. So in order to make these work together, 
the suprachiasmatic nuclei make sure that hormones and temperature and uh, systems like the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system regulate all the various clocks in the body. Light seems to be the largest stimuli which is uh, which works on the retinal cells and directly stimulate the suprachiasmatic nuclei. Food and exercise also stimulate central and peripheral clocks but not to the extent as light does. What makes the circadian rhythm even more interesting is that uh, the, the rhythms change across lifespan. So the circadian rhythm changes from infancy over uh, adolescence, adulthood and during older age. The sleep-wake uh, cycles also change with aging, temperature changes, um, uh, you know, peaks during childhood, melatonin, a very important hormone, the rhythms of melatonin also, are ch also change during the different stages of life as well as, uh, as, well as does uh, cortisol. I put together this illustration of uh, body organ clocks seen through the lenses of different types of medicines like traditional Chinese medicine and other forms of medicine around the world where different organs are assigned different times of the day for peak activity. One way of looking at it is probably if one uh, gets woken up early in the morning around 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock um, some forms of medicine or some sciences say that this could be a problem with a large intestine. So one needs to look into what the challenges are. So this kind of uh, a clock also helps us look into um, how we can put these different systems together and, and merge them into this complex circadian rhythm. One of the interesting topics in this publication is the maternal fetal rhythm synchronization. The rhythmic environment is critical for normal fetal and postnatal development. The developing fetus is exposed to an array of time cues from its mother. And one of the important signals provided by the mother is through melatonin. So these environments or these rhythmic environments help the develop uh, help the fetus develop rather into a healthy one. Any disruptions that alter maternal endocrine timing signals, for example, can impair maternal fetal synchronization and fetal development. It is therefore very, very crucial to make sure that the mother has a healthy circadian rhythm so that she can pass that information over to the fetus. So what's going to happen if there is a disruption in the circadian rhythm? It certainly changes many biological processes. So how can the circadian rhythm get uh, disrupted? Basically, by we need to look into many environmental factors such as night shift, working late hours or working through the night, exposure to artificial light, exposure to electromagnetic waves. These basically change um, or alter melatonin rhythms and precipitate a lot of different uh, medical challenges. It is also important, as uh, depicted in this uh, diagram here, that these changes, including melatonin rhythm disruptions, can impair gene expressions. And these aberrant or these impaired gene expressions can alter cell proliferation and can even end up with various cancers. This interesting review looks at uh, circadian misalignment in, in humans and what challenges that can cause. The authors in this publication have listed these challenges that can be precipitated by 
circadian misalignment or circadian rhythm or dysrhythm. They are immune diseases, mood disorders, cancers, enhanced uh, aging, um, kidney challenges, psychiatric diseases, infertility, eye diseases, neurological challenges, sleep challenges which is peaking these days as well as metabolic diseases like diabetes. Therefore, it is so important to make sure that this circadian rhythm is not disrupted. One has to look at the human circadian rhythm through a macro lens as well as a micro lens. So one has to look into uh, the various activities of the day, the, the food that we eat, the exercise that we do, and uh, try, to, try to work it out so that the different systems in the body, the different organs talk to each other and are in sync, all in order to keep us healthy.